basically in this video we're going to review a few things because we're going to look at using the normal calculator in StatCrunch and then the binomial calculator in StatCrunch which we've done but this will just be a review of that. So here the first question is they want you to calculate P of, of X probability of X number of success as, successes back from the binomial distribution. So we go into StatCrunch then we go into the stat calculators and we get the binomial. So here's our binomial calculator. Okay, so we want to just get this right here, the probability of X number of successes and the X will be 38, so we fill all this in. The N is 54, the probability is 7.7, .7, excuse me, and then we want to change this to equal to and 38 and then hit compute and this will be the probability right here 1 or 0.1179 or 0 0.1180 just like they have here so that's showing the probability of a binomial distribution found with the binomial calculations now it says, can the normal distribution be approximated to the pro this probability? So now we want to know is, can we use the normal curve to approximate this probability rather than using a binomial probability calculator? And we can because the n times the p times 1 minus p is greater than 10. Let's show that. So we have n times p, 54 times 0.7, then we take that answer times 1 minus the 0.7, and we see that that's 11.34, which is greater than or equal to 10. So that allows us to use a normal approximation. So if I scroll down here, let's do the same thing and approximate it by the normal. Now you can see that that's slightly different. That answer is slightly different than the normal approximation, which it would make sense because it's an approximation. But how we do that is we go back to StatCrunch. We get our normal calculator, so go up to here in normal. And then we need some information. We need the mean, the standard deviation, and then we have our probability stuff down here, but we don't have a mean or standard deviation. So remember the mean and standard deviation of a binomial probability are these two equations right here. So let's get the, this is the information I have for this problem. Let's get the mean, so it's n times p, which was n times p right up here, so 37.8 is my mean. Okay, then I need the square root of this value in here. Well, I already calculated that right before that was on my calculator still. 11.34 is this under here. Now let's just take the square root of that. So it's 3.367. So I'll do 3.367. 3.367 is the standard deviation. All right, then we're approximating 38. Now if we just put 38 in here, this is not going to be the correct answer. It says 0.52. Okay, because this is taking all this information and we just want exactly 38. So we want just exactly 38. So we have to look at something here. If I look at this picture right here, this shows how to calculate a binomial probability. So we want just this bar here on a histogram of a binomial histogram. We want just this information for 38. So to do that, we actually have to go a half a unit to the right, so 38.5, and a half a unit to the left, 37.5. We have to calculate just this area of this probability. So we calculate 38.5, and we get the area, and we subtract off 37.5 and then that will give the probability of that exact area. So that's what we have to do to get the probability of an exact number like this. So let's do the first one, 
Then we'll write that down here. Keep that somewhere. And then we do the same thing with 37.5. And we take that number here and write it down as well. Now we use our calculator and we come back and we subtract those. And then that would be the probability of getting, and what do I have one probability here is 0 0.1190, I have 0.118. So I probably should have had a better uh, number on my standard deviation. My standard deviation was rounded off. If I have a better standard deviation, this number becomes uh, closer to the number that they have here. And they do have some tolerance on this number. So I would be fine with the 1.1178. You can see it right there on the list. But normally it's best to use more numbers in your standard deviation to get a more accurate answer. That's what I would suggest doing.